December 14th. What's going to happen today? Tell me, today? Victor. Oh, tell me, honestly. Okay. Are you a human being or a robot? Huh? Right? Or are you sure? Have you checked? Because it seems to me you have a set of programmed commands instead of brains in your head. Ever consider showing a little bit of flexibility? Just a little bit, huh? Ever consider that selling butter and selling gasoline isn't the same thing? I... Well, listen... Listen to me, Victor. Listen to me a second before your tiny electrical brains run out of batteries. When you sell him butter, you sell him a delicious breakfast. A person can live without a delicious breakfast. Yes, most people in this fucking town haven't even heard of a delicious breakfast. When you sell him butter, he's in a position to bargain. Because if he doesn't have butter, he'll smear his toast with clay and by god i swear he will eat it with no less pleasure but when you sell him gasoline victor when you sell him gasoline you sell him his business you sell him the entire meaning of his existence because victor if he doesn't have gasoline he'll have to shut down his gas station and if he closes his gas station he won't have butter or toast on the table and in fact he won't even have a fucking table because his creditors will take away his whole fucking house and a man needs a fucking house so so that he can have a place to put his fucking table. You got the logic, right? Now see if you can digest it with your fucking electrodes or whatever you usually think with and call me back when you come to an agreement on the price. Ah, you're already here. I'm sorry, Jack. It's a busy time of year. I gotta sit by the phone all day. I can call you Jack, right? Then why am I asking? I'm already calling you Jack. <laughs> Let's sit down. Why am I here? We could go to the bar, by the way. I'm waiting for a call, but I could. It's fine here. You sure? Well, as you like. That's what I love about Sharpwood. Even if I forget to put the beer in the refrigerator, it'll still be cold. Here, you can help yourself. Hmm, doesn't look like beer, does it? Well, what is it? The infamous smelly soup? You should try it. Go on. Try it, try it, don't be squeamish. Half of Sharpwood eats that soup every day. <laughs> no one's dead yet. <laughs> Not from the soup, anyway. Now I see. Hmm? Now I see why you'd say that anyone who lives on this soup would try to get out of here. Well, yes, but... Uh... But most of them stay. What do you think keeps them here? Family? Friends? Friends? But there's nothing easier than making friends. When did you arrive in Sharpwood? About ten weeks ago? Or was it eight? And look, you're already surrounded by friends. No, no, it's not friends. It's the enemies. Ask anyone in the city. Ask a poor man. Ask a rich man. Of course, if you can find a rich man. They all have them. Every one of them has a neighbor they can't stand. Well, how can you leave Sharpwood and allow your enemy to go on without you? So he could plant a cherry tree in your backyard? So he, not you, could buy drugs on discount? So he could grab a nice plot of land in the cemetery? No, no, no one can allow this. The enemy must be exhausted if it takes you your whole life. With the but, enemy, you need to but, fight to the last. But why? Once you have an enemy, you're doomed. You can't think straight. Old Sheriff Wells was doomed. He couldn't stand drug dealers. I myself don't care for him, but Wells didn't count them as people at all, despised them more than murderers and rapists, and as soon as those fucking neckties appeared in the city, he knew right away that they were his enemies. Enemies which he must overcome, you see? And even if by some miracle he succeeded, what next? What other enemies would he have invented? And the performance we arranged for him that night? He had no reason to believe that there were ties hiding in that house. But one phone call, from this phone here, by the way, and he rushes off into the night to God knows where. You know what happened next. He threw himself into a hail of bullets, got two young cops killed too, though they had absolutely nothing to do with it. Sheriff Wells invented his enemies, and he paid for them dearly. So the policeman had to pay for doing police work. What? Jack, come on! I know we need the police. Of course we need them. 
There was a case here recently, a month before you got here, maybe less. A fellow named Rocco, he was a butcher here. His old mother, Bertha, went missing. And Bertha had either Alzheimer's or old age dementia, or is it the same thing? Anyway, poor Bertha always forgot everything. Couldn't even recognize Rocco half the time. And then suddenly, she disappeared somewhere. So, what did our Rocco decide? Our Rocco decided that his mother was kidnapped by Eves Menke, another local butcher, his competitor, so to speak. No, oh, just think, a man finds his mother missing, his old sick mother who can't remember her way to the toilet, and the first idea that comes into his head, his competitor kidnapped her. He watched too many movies, I guess. So what did Rocco do? Rocco picked up the hammer, went to Eve's Menke's house, cracked open his skull, then broke his brother's skull, then broke his father's skull, then went down to their basement shouting, Mom, I've come to save you. And the basement was empty. Of course it's fucking empty. And there he is, standing there. Goes back home, covered in blood, hammer in hand, and his mother is there, sitting in her armchair, quietly knitting. Walked around in the woods all day, then came back home. Doesn't even remember a thing about it. Now Rocco will be in prison for the rest of his life. But if he just called the police, if the cops had combed the forest looking for poor Bertha, nothing would have happened. So of course we need the police. Never imagine, Jack, that I think the police is my enemy. I don't invent enemies for myself. I won't repeat the old sheriff's mistakes. Unlike the new sheriff. What, you arranging a special performance for her, too? I could, of course, but what happens after that? Marino says that after Gail Greenberg's death, there's no first deputy in the department. So if the sheriff suddenly dies, anyone might take her place. And I do not need anyone. I need you. I'm sorry? You're working in the sheriff's department, unofficially, right? I think it's time to formalize your status. First deputy sheriff. It's a good start, huh? Why would Lily formally appoint me as first deputy? You're not listening to me at all, Jack. Lily invented an enemy for herself and will do anything if it means she can get even with her enemy. Believe me, run the ties out of Sharpwood and you'll get your post. She wouldn't think for a second. I'm not sure she... Uh... Just think, Jack. Just think. The ties didn't just flood the city with drugs. Oh, no, that would not be enough. The ties killed her precious Sheriff Wells. Well, that's what she believes anyway. But would they stop at that? Oh, no. The ties killed Gail Greenberg. And was that enough? Not at all. Now the ties had also killed her champion, Captain Carter. As far as I know, Jack, you made sure poor Lily thought as much. You can be sure, Jack. Hatred for her enemy has all but blinded our sheriff. Like her predecessor. Like her predecessor's predecessor. Consider this a Sharpwood tradition. Suppose she agrees. Although I do not really believe she will, then I'll still need to deliver and take out these ties. Is that a problem? I thought you were an experienced cop. I don't even know where their headquarters are. But I do. I learned a lot from our distinguished young student, Arthur Sherman. The scholar couldn't be held in isolation without books. He traded all the valuable secrets of the insidious neckties for the Viscount de Bragelonne. Can you imagine? <laughs> Even if I can. Oh, that must be Victor. Don't worry, Jack. She'll agree. You'll see. She'll agree without hesitation. <laughs> Call me when you made the deal. Just don't leave it too long. Here, little souvenir from Freebird. Oh boy. Hello. What? Why does he need so much? The boy is free breaks public even when he will not escape punishment. I'm wondering what's the canon ending like. I help out the the gang, the or the the other guy. Back ready. Ah, Marshall, I'm so glad you're back. I don't care if you drink too much. I don't care. Wait, why are you drinking? I drank too much. Why is everybody drinking? It sounds like there's water running through my telephone wire. Where's trains? I better stay home and deal with this, right? Uh, no. There's not this funeral for Charlie. I wanted to go to honor. Yeah, sure, I guess. Who the heck is Charlie? Who is this Charlie person they're talking? Oh. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> I was like, who the heck is trying? All oh, right. Hmm. 
Old church. Oh, try that. This might hurt his health, but got nothing else to do. Oh, we might kill him, so... Yeah, and he's dead. Damn. Oh, there goes that case. <laughs> you know, for Charlie, yeah, he, he did stuff. 535 in progress. Wait, what? Reckless engagement? God is forced the prisoners to play Russian roulette. That's not okay. I will send him. Code I. Of course, I just sent him. <laughs> All right. Anyone good at some intelligence? Mm. What do I got in storage? Saw some cigarettes while I'm here. Saw the heroin. Saw the beer. Thank God for having the heroin. Yeah, I went well. I'm glad I called it disappear. Thanks for letting me go. No problem. Twenty-eight in progress. Good. Yeah, pay for her funeral too. Right now, parts of the people being killed and now they're screaming, yelling like someone's being cut wide open. Why? All right, here you go. You don't have a brain. You don't. Here you go. Go check it out. Found the defending guilty. That's nice. Here, go work on your stealth. Go work on your interrogation. Your intelligence should go up because since, you know, you're gonna be handling cases again. There are two prisoners in the yard. One of them is holding a revolver and he's ready to spin the drum behind him, a drunken guard. Uh, or I'm going to throw down the revolver. Prisoner one will obey the cop, but the guard jabbed with his... Uh, shoot him. <laughs> 535, complete. That's how the guard and prisoners return to cells. Mm, nice tobacco and stuff. I'll come in handy. There's Ash, I'm very much in love with Laura. She's just the funniest person in the world. Who's Laura? Well, I want to do something special when I propose. It won't be easy to surprise her, but I thought this through. Laura was the chosen of the event. Can you leave me? And I have to drive on a stun grenade. We'll wait until I was alone. Ah. Uh. I don't really have any stun grenades. Um. That's send that guy. There's <laughs> always a scapegoat for everything. It was our lie that we're just watching Bloody Shirt 5. Wasted valuable time for all my cops. And one of them's dead! <laughs> Five 
539 in progress. Firefight. Fine, all my caught in panic. My god, there's a real massacre going on in the station. The shots, I haven't heard. I haven't let up for several minutes. I don't. All right, we'll go check it out. God. All right, thank goodness. Go check it out. Five sixty four in progress. Drug manufacturing. Someone has a painting of a terrible stench and smoke coming from the trailer. They believe that drugs are being brewed. Oh, nothing I can do about it because all my my good cop is dead. 534 in progress. Child abuse. One more part of their son's friend is afraid to go to his home because he gets badly beaten. What happened to the cops that that one guy bought? 518 in progress. On the side, the funeral of the crime boss. Uh, and then another death. According to funeral homeowner, the newly deceased. Is then Tony. It seems that this young man so saying a few bad words about the disease and said and commended the uh, campaign offering. Uh, silent. All right, we'll send those three and the sniper. Can't give her coke. Can't give him anything. Here's. Alright, clerk, uh, when I'm retiring, is that what you're thinking? Yes, I still work every day, people die on weekends, you know, and it's a rare day in Sharpwood when only one person dies, so there's always plenty of work to do. Pl people never stop dropping dead. But well, the owner is a tight fisted as they come, wouldn't even hire a cleaning lady, and you won't believe the mud those uh, folks dragging, but enough about the cleaning lady, there's nothing we don't have. A soap in the toilet, can't believe it. I'll tell you one thing though, I'm tired of having to bring in my own soap from the house. So if you bring me the few packs of soap, I'll tell you all about those thugs who made such a fuss in the funeral. Here, have some soap. These thugs are some great Greek criminal named. Uh, I don't know how they end up in our town. All I know is that they left their homeland, either fleeing from the law or from some uh, rival family. In a way, the head of the family died, and there was some kind of fuss at the wake. It seems like someone stole something right out of the coffin. The crazy thing uh, people do right. They're obviously not from around here, though. Nothing is scared with these people. And in the end, instead of rambling the deceased, they run through the office, look inside every box, and search for something one of them stole, but they didn't even find anything. Now they're wandering around the office like they lost. I don't even know what they think they're doing. We only got three cops because early I can't. Ah, uh, jeez. Okay, so we know there isn't a bomb. Mm. I don't know how well this is going to go. They all got the same ability, so it's like... I don't know if this is going to go loud or stealth. I don't know. Three cops. And tries all suspects. Turn one. I didn't want you to do that. Okay. This is going to be a real short game. <laughs> Roger. 
Roger. Ah, jeez. Really hoping we get out of this. Roger. 580. Two guys in the front. Hope there isn't any traps. Oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. This ain't good. Here. Ah. Uh. We have visual. 580. Roger. 580. This is going to get loud. Just want to see. Sounds the alarm. Five ninety. Oh, come on. How how did I miss that? How did I miss that? Oh, jeez. Ah, <sighs> oh, God. Roger. Roger. There we go. And he's down. Roger. Move up a bit. Oh boy. Please don't. <clears throat> oh! We're pinned here. Damn it. I'm gonna 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 restart the mission. I don't know what to do, man. Like... Mm. Okay, hold on. I'm getting sent some stuff. Hold on. Alright, um... Roger. He moves up to the front. Roger. Let's go to the side. I don't... We have visual. It's just so difficult Roger. right now because like... Because the game screwed me over with that contest.
The contest is what screws you over. It's only these three guys. We have visual. See if I can, I don't know, do something. Try and get these guys, I guess. Rocking. Suspect's turn. Oh, well. Oh, dear. Hmm. Let's do it this way. stash a stash of goods wow that's so amazing <laughs> We have our we know our way in. Doesn't have a flash. Doesn't have a flash. Roger. We have visual. And turn. <laughs> See what happens. As fast as you can back to the car. Because <laughs> uh, this ain't looking too good. Get 
Get on the ground. Is that a box? Roger. And turn. Because I don't know what's going to happen here. Okay, he walks out. He walks back. We have visual. Just keep on running. Oh my god. I'm sorry if I'm a bit quiet. I'm just tired. Ah, uh, jeez. Okay, so he's gonna move up. I do like how the, the game... Like, oh jeez. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Rest this guy. Kind of over here. Just keep running with the <laughs> with the stuff. Suspects turn. I mean, there's someone over there. Oh, jeez. On the ground. Roger. We have visual. Did he see anything? Roger. Did he see anything? Ah, uh, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. We're losing people. Got shot on the leg. And he's dead. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take a break. <laughs>